Okay, good morning again, everybody. Hopefully we've got everybody now um, that's going to join us this morning. Um, it's lovely to see so many people here. Um, I'm just going to leave the chat box open for just a moment in case anyone's having any trouble hearing me or seeing the presentation. If you can let me know if there's any little hiccups going on. Um, but we'll get started in just a moment. Okay. Right. Okay, so um, hi everyone and welcome to the webinar about Count on Numeracy. Um, I'm Rebecca Corden and thank you for Prime Press for hosting this webinar. Um, firstly, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, um, my name is Rebecca Corden and I'm a UK qualified primary school teacher. Um, I've been qualified for 18 years, qualified back in 2002, ages and ages ago. Um, and I've taught across all of the primary age groups, right from nursery right up to year six. Um, I spent a good 10 years teaching in the EYFS in British schools. Um, and I was the EYFS and maths lead teacher for my schools. Um, and I now work as an educational consultant and author alongside a little bit of private tutoring. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. Um, I feel really strongly about effective early years teaching and learning. Um, and I was really, I'm really passionate about strong foundations in numeracy. Maths is probably my favourite subject to teach. Um, okay, so I was really delighted when Prime Press asked me to author Count on Numeracy as it combines the two things that I'm really, really passionate about. So if we have a little look, today's webinar um, is going to last approximately 30 minutes. I think it might be slightly over that. Um, and there will be the opportunities to ask questions at the end. The webinar will have some interactive elements so that you can experience using the scheme firsthand and see how it's going to suit your school. And today's session aims to inform you all about what makes count on numeracy different from other schemes of work and how you can use it to ensure fantastic learning outcomes for your early years students. Okay, so the structure of the webinar today, um, we're going to have a look and think about numeracy and how does it differ from maths. Um, secondly, I'll tell you about some of the features and benefits of count on numeracy. Next, we'll have a look at the components included in the count on numeracy programme and how the scope and sequence are organised. And then we'll look at some of the great teaching ideas in count on numeracy, which is when we'll do an interactive activity designed to help you experience and discover how the scheme could aid your numeracy teaching in your schools. Lastly, there'll be a Q&A session, um, and I'd suggest if you've got any questions that occur to you during the presentation, if you make a quick note of them, and we'll pop them in the chat box at the end, because we will be using the chat box throughout the webinar for other things, and I would hate to miss anyone's question out if it gets lost in, the, the, in all of the text. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so what is numeracy and how is it different from maths? And I thought to get everyone's brains working and wake everyone up this morning, perhaps you could pop some ideas in the chat box about your understanding of numeracy. Okay, yeah, so thank you, Gina. Yes, so um, we feel that numeracy focuses more on skills. Yeah, and mathematical skills. Thank you, um, Ahmed. Um, yep, steps to maths. Yeah, so these are all great. So we're all thinking along the same lines. That's fantastic. Um, teaches vocabulary. Yes, really important. Um, but it doesn't only teach maths, it also teaches vocabulary. 
Um, so I've just got a few points um, to pop up on the PowerPoint. Um, so numeracy is the ability to use numbers and interpret and communicate mathematically to solve real world problems. And a child, of course, we all know this, that a child that has a strong numeracy skills is a problem solver. They're a critical thinker. Um, they investigate and they're able to apply their mathematical understanding to everyday situations and across the curriculum. Numeracy is more specific than the broader term mathematics, um, which is often just associated with arithmetic and the mechanics of maths. Numeracy encourages children to approach problems in a logistical and systematic way and to draw on their existing knowledge. Of course, it's important for everyday life skills. And there's some examples here of things I was thinking of that children can do if they are, if they have a strong numerical understanding. Okay, um, so obviously teaching numeracy is perfect for learning through play. So if we have a look at the next slide, I'm just going to talk to you about how count on, numer count on numeracy is a little bit different to other schemes. Okay, so count on numeracy is a fully resourced scheme. Um, it uses materials and resources found commonly in the early years classrooms. So there's no more inventing, reinventing the wheel, making your own worksheets. Um, as a teacher myself for many years, I knew how important it was to design a scheme that teachers could pick up and use how it is if they wanted to. Okay. However, the scheme is adaptable and it caters for a wide range of learning styles, levels of ability and confidence so that you know that when you choose to count on numeracy, you're catering for every child in your setting. Um, the scheme uses materials and resources found commonly in your early years classrooms and many of the materials that are suggested are really cheap, readily available and they won't require you to have a huge budget to deliver the scheme. All of the activities have been designed so that teachers can easily add their own adaptations to suit the resources and the environment they're working in. The scheme's strongly based on play-based cross-curricular learning which means that you can ensure that numeracy skills can find their way into every corner of your learning environment to make your students truly numerate learners. There are ideas for every stage of your numeracy teaching. So there are teacher input activities, consolidation and group activities, and also structured play opportunities for that independent learning time. So we believe that count on numeracy is a flexible numeracy solution which can be adapted to suit your setting and your students best. All throughout the scheme, there are high quality images, which we're going to have a look at in just a little while. There are electronic and printed materials um, to suit the technology that you've got in your classrooms. Um, and we believe that the scheme is full of inspiring and exciting teaching ideas um, for your teachers and students. Okay, so, um, next, we're going to have a look at the series components. Okay. And first of all, we have the teacher guide with four lesson plans and ideas for consolidation and independent learning. There's an electronic version available as part of the e-kit, which we're going to take a look at later. And we'll have a look at how the teacher guide is set out as well. There's also the student book for sharing with children during teaching and consolidation. And this is re a really colorful and engaging resource which children will love exploring and discussing with each other and their teachers. We will look more closely at that in a moment. Um, then we have the workbook. And this is for children to complete themselves guided by adults if necessary. Um, and we'll have a look at some sample pages shortly. Um, it's designed so that teachers have a record of children's learning to accompany their observations and ongoing assessments. And they're designed to be really engaging and simple for the children to use. The final component of the scheme is the e-kit. Um, and this is something that can be used on the smart board at the front of the class, and it contains additional resources and activities. Um, and also some really great games. Okay, so the next thing we're going to have a look at is the scope and sequence. Um, so this takes up two slides and I'll just give you a chance to have a look at it. 
Okay, um, this appears on the first page of every teacher's guide. So there is a teacher guide for EYFS one and two, and they give a simply laid out overview of the objectives and themes for each unit. The example is from the EYFS one teacher's guide, this example. Um, and as you can see, it's a really easy to access sort of one stop shop for checking your coverage and the sequence of your numeracy teaching so that you can make sure everything has been covered over the year. Um, in a moment, we'll just, if I click onto the next slide, we can see this is the EYFS2 um, scope and sequence. Um, and you can see that each group has plans which are split into six themes. And each theme contains six weeks worth of work that focuses on a different part of the curriculum. And you'll notice that each theme contains a variety of different activities and objectives um, that range between number, calculation, shape, space and measure. And that's to ensure that the learning is continuous and the skills aren't forgotten or missed out. And we all know that children learn best by repetition. So the way we've organized the scope and sequence means that important concepts are revisited across the different themes and also across both years of the EYFS. Okay, hopefully you've all had a chance to look at that now. Um, but I think this is being recorded so you can always come back and have a look if you wanted to look in more detail at the scope and sequence. Um, the next thing we're going to do is have a look at the teacher's book. Okay, and in the teacher guides, the first page of each weekly set of planning um, looks like this. And as I've already mentioned, the scheme is split into two phases, one for foundation one and one for foundation two. And each phase has six themes designed to last six weeks each. And at the beginning of each week's planning, you'll find an overview of learning just like this, which is a really useful way of having a reference before you start to deliver each theme and you can be really prepared. Okay, and we're going to have a little look at each different element on that page now. Okay, so each overview contains the learning objectives to be covered in that week's teaching. Um, then next we'll see a really comprehensive list of all the resources that you'd require to deliver the scheme. Just below that, um, we've got our assessment and activity keys, and you'll notice that these are mentioned throughout the scheme. And they show you the expected outcomes for children at varying ability levels, and they also give you um, a little bit of guidance about how each activity you could use, whether it's a whole class activity, whether it's like consolidation or group learning, or whether it's for individual or independent learning. Okay. Uh, all the activities are fully differentiated and the keys allow you to tailor your teaching and questioning so that children get the best learning experience for their ability level. And that, they, of course, they all make progress, which is the most important thing. Um, next on the front page of the teacher guide, um, we have a section that's on key concepts. Um, key numerical and mathematical concepts to be taught during the week. And there's also some key vocabulary here and some tips for successful teaching and learning. So this really is a scheme that should be able to be picked up by any teacher, um, any adult working in the classroom so that they can deliver the scheme. Finally, on that front page, sorry, there's a lot on this front page, so it's taking a little while. Um, we have the all important assessment criteria. And here you can see the assessment key being used. Um, We've split our assessment criteria into approaching for children that are working just below the expected level on level and challenge for those children that need that extra challenge um, and are ready to move on to the next level. Um, so these are really useful for record keeping and ongoing assessment. Um, and it means you can target your observations that week on exactly what the children are supposed to be learning. Okay, now we're going to have a look together at more detailed planning. Um, so the first thing we're going to have a look at is the core input activities. And there are five of these each week. They're intended to be led by an adult. Um, although you know as much as I do that children will carry on doing these activities in their own time anyway. Um, 
and they're intended to be delivered either to the whole class or to a small group as appropriate. And the input activities can vary from using the e-kit to deliver a lesson on the smart board or sharing a student book with a small group of learners. There's a balance of activities between using the smart, book, smart board and the student book um, and also some practical activities. Okay, so you'll notice that there are page references that tell you where to find the materials, a little thumbnail image which shows you what it's going to look like in the student book or workbook. Um, and of course, we've got those assessment and activity key references um, for your easy organisation in your classroom. Okay, they're, as I've said, they're easy to follow for every adult that's in your EYFS classroom. Um, so the following thing we've got is um, an example of a consolidation activity or two consolidation activities. There are six of these every week in your planning. Um, and they're designed to be led by an adult, um, although they could be for independent learning as well. And again, there are some suggestions for resources. And again, we've got those assessment and activity keys, which you'll see throughout the scheme. Okay, so this should be easy to follow for all the adults in your classroom. Okay, following the consolidation activities, the last element of the teacher guide is the structured play opportunities. Um, and there are seven of these for every week of your classes learning. And there's ideas of resources and activities that you can provide for children to use during independent learning time. You'll notice that we again we've got the assessment and activity keys. Um, the difference with this section of the teacher guide is that there's also a handy list of key assessment questions. So that the adults that are facilitating or observing the play can assess children's understanding in a relaxed and non intrusive way while chatting naturally to the children during their play. Okay, and on the next few slides, we're going to have a little peek at the student books and the workbooks which are provided as part of the scheme as well. Um, you've seen some thumbnails of these already on the teacher guide pages. Um, these are all the front covers. You can see that we've got a, a colour theme going, so red for EYFS1 and blue for EYFS2. Um, and here we have an example of a lovely double page spread, which is contained in the student book. You'll notice how most of the pages of the student book have a little number line at the bottom so that the children are constantly exposed to those numbers that they're learning about and also numbers in order. So it's great for formation and sequencing. Okay, um, now it is time for a little challenge. I hope you're all up for it. Um, you'll see there's a purple rectangle um, covering part of the page. Um, and I wanted to challenge you this morning to think about the types of questions you might ask children if you were using this resource with them um, or the ways that you might use the resource with children, what you might do with it. OK, so if you want to, if you've got any ideas, pop them in the chat box and we'll have a, a quick discussion about those before we move on and have a look at some other pages from the student book and the workbook. Okay, yeah, so thanks, Summer. We could um, practice counting backwards, um, or we could, um, Gina suggested we could ask them to talk about the colours of the buildings, how many red buildings, and we could also do some skip counting, counting in twos. That would be great. You could follow the road along and do that, or counting in fives, absolutely, yeah. So great for ordering the numbers um, and talking about, so which building can you see on page, on number 15? Um, and questions like that. So that's some great ideas. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, so on the next slide, oh, I think I've got one more in chat. <laughs> Thank you, um, Samar. Awesome. That's great. Um, it's good to know that you're liking the scheme so far. Um, if we have a look on the next page, it should reveal the questions. OK, so there are some basic ones here, but of course, you've all come up with your own ideas as well. So that's great. 
Okay, and the idea of these books is that they're to be shared with children. They can also be broadcast onto the interactive whiteboard using the e-kit. So the, you can have these in printed version or to display in front of the whole class. Okay, the following page, we've got some more pages. Um, this is from a different unit. So this is from a, a measures unit. And again, you can see we've got some questions here, but we've also got some um, sentences that need completing. Uh, so another example from the student book there. These are both examples from EYFS2, so the, the higher level. Okay, and next we're going to have a little sneaky peek at the workbooks. Okay, so here, um, the next two slides, we've got some examples of pages from the workbook. And as you can see, there's a variety of different types of activities designed to be done either independently or with an adult, depending on your children's ability and their understanding. Um, some of the pages require tracing or drawing. So here we've got a counting activity, um, which would also involve drawing the numbers. And other than, others of them might require writing numerals. Um, and on pages where children are going to have to write the numbers, there's always some sort of reference, either a number line or the numbers are displayed on the screen. Okay, here also we can see a page from a different unit, which is all about shapes. And there are some questions there that you could talk about with the children while they're doing the work. Okay, um, on the following page, so we've got a calculating unit workbook page there. Um, and here you can see the number line at the bottom of the page. And we've got another workbook page. You'll see that this links back to the student book pages about the longest and shortest objects. Um, so children are seeing the same images again and again for repetition um, and consolidation. Okay. Um, so we're going to have a Q&A session a little bit later. I'm just going to stop sharing because... Um, I'm able to show you the e-kit before we do anything else. Um, so if I pop that up on the screen. Sorry, it's just taking a moment to um, pop onto the screen. There we are. Okay. Um, so... <coughs> Sorry. So this is the e-kit um, and this can be displayed on your interactive whiteboards um, or classroom computers um, and it's got a variety of different features. Um, it's downloaded. Um, so the first thing you can do, um, which the children will quite enjoy, is change the background. Um, over here on the left hand side, we've got a, an orange arrow, which is our tools button. Um, and this has various different features. So um, the first thing is a crosser. Um, which is like, um, like a highlighter pen which disappears. Okay, so hopefully you can see me drawing on the screen there and then it is disappearing. Okay. Um, I must remember to turn that off. Um, if you don't turn it off, it stays on. Um, the following button, the little hand, is so that you can move objects around the screen, so quite useful. Um, the light bulb tool is for if you want to turn the lights off so that's a brilliant for memory games um, showing the children a picture right what do you see how many shapes can you see what are the names of the shapes you can see and then turn the lights off and let them have some thinking time okay um, the spotlight tool is similar um, but it's great for if you just want to show a segment of a page so again fantastic for shapes um, or looking at numerals and the shapes that numerals make. Okay. Oh, there's some fantastic comments coming up here. I'll have a, a really good look at these later. So um, it looks like people are enjoying the e-kit so far. Um, so if we turn the spotlight off, and um, we've also got a zoom in and a zoom out. Um, so you can make the pages larger or smaller for the children to focus in on a point. And then down here, we've got the pen tool, um, which is exactly what it says. It's for drawing on the screen. So great for smart board um, learning, great for showing the children specific features. You can change the size of the pen and the color of the pen using the menus here. 
Okay, just an example. Um, and there's also an eraser button, which will erase your writing when you finish. Um, the resize button at the bottom of the screen is great for if you've zoomed in or zoomed out and you just want to put everything back to the way it started. Okay, so that's the tools menu. Um, over here on the right hand side, you'll see there's a save button so you can save the work that you've been doing with the children. Um, then the next button, there is a link here so that you can open up any of the books on the screen here in the e-kit. Um, of course, this is great. You can do a single page spread or a double page spread. So if we have a look at the student book, for example, and then we can move through the pages. So this is the page we were looking at earlier on the PowerPoint and you can display it on the screen. You can, of course, get the tools menu out at this point um, and you can be showing them some numbers here or you can draw on it and you'll see there are some interactive things here so if we click here it will show us a flashcard of the number 12. okay um ishmo you're saying you can't see it's okay it's okay now Oh, okay. Can it's can okay. every can everyone else yeah. see the e-kit before I yeah. carry on jabbering away? It's okay. Okay. Other people can see it. Oh, I'm not quite sure why you can't, Ishmael. Um, what I will do is I will just, just stop sharing and then reshare. Sometimes that helps on Zoom. Um, I'll just try that. Okay. I don't know if that's helped at all. Um, Hopefully everyone can see it now. Um, so yes, that's our, the double page spread. Okay, fantastic. I think everyone can see now. Um, so we've got the student book. The workbook um, works in exactly the same way. So you can just double click. And again, you'll see the scope and sequence is inside the student book and the workbook for easy reference for your staff. Okay, um, but if we move through the pages, um, we can see here one of the activities that we were looking at earlier on the PowerPoint, you can pop it up on your smart book, smart board so that that could be completed with the whole class if necessary. Okay, um, there's also a version of the teacher's guide which is on here. Okay, um, and I will show you in just a moment there because there I've got them up on my PDF there is a PDF teacher's guide, which you can download for easy printing. Um, there's also an activity sheet file and some flashcards. Okay, so if I just quickly share those <clears throat> so that you know what's included. Um, so here we can see the flashcards and the flashcards. We've got one for every number with some really great images. Um, these have turned out brilliantly. Um, all the way up to 20. And you'll notice a lot of the images are from the student book and workbook. So it's all repeated and lots of repetition. Okay, so we've got numbers up to 20. We've also got um, flashcards for shapes, 2D and 3D. And also for days of the week and for passing of time vocabulary. Okay, um, the other thing that you can download is the number formation sheets. So we've got one of those for every number from zero to 20. And again, it uses the same images as were on the flashcards and in the workbook and the student book. Okay, um, I won't go all through those. We could be here quite a while. Um, I'll just pop the e-kit back up again. Um, and this, so that's the books. If we have a look at the media, we've got a song for every number. And I've just realized I've not shared with sound. You won't be able to hear that. Okay. Um, so if we have a look, for example, at number two. Two to the number two round the head and a nice straight shoe. Two, two, the number two, round the head and a nice straight shoe. Two, two, the number two, round the head and a nice straight shoe. Okay, um, you 
probably get the idea there's a song for every number um, and these also go along with one of the games which is to do with number formation and some elements in the teacher but um, in the student book and the workbooks which are to do with forming numbers correctly so we've got the songs there um, we've also got a sketchboard so it's like um uh, like a mini whiteboard but on your interactive whiteboard um, for you to use you can of course use all the tools on this so you can draw um, and write things for the children to see um, the next thing we've got is the teachers tools um, here you can pop up on the screen a clock um, you can also clock, pick up pop up a stopwatch so these are all great for if you're asking the children to perhaps go off and find three of something or um, and get them all back on the carpet in time uh, there's also a timer so you can time things um, there's a calculator should you need it okay um, and there are also some sound effects the green sound effects are all um, praise positive sounds well done and the orangey red ones are encouragement so if a child's not quite got the right answer um, you can use one of these. Try again. Okay. Um, and obviously you can pop these teachers tools out if you're looking at the student book or the workbook on the screen. Okay. Um, and the final thing in the e-kit is that we have a selection of games. I'll just move the tools out of the way. Um, as you can see, we've used all of the same. I'll just turn the sound off. <laughs> we've used all of the same visuals that were in the student book and the workbook so it's all repetition and consolidating the same ideas um, if we just have a quick look at um, a couple of them and um, we've got a shopping game here and um, you can see there are two levels um, and this one is where you would put um, fruit or food in the basket um, each time you open this um, you'll get a different number so it's not the same every time um, and the children would just pick up and drag the fruits over. I think I've left that tool on from the tools menu. Yep, yeah. there we are. Oh, it's still on, never mind. So you'd pop them in the basket and you can check it and it will tell the children whether they've got it correct or not. Um, this red bar along the top, um, if, I do, if I do one question, you'll see what happens. Okay, um, and then we're going to do one less. Ooh. There we are. Okay, and you can see that the red bar along the top slowly turns green as the child works their way through the activity. Okay, um, there are lots of other games which we could spend forever looking at um, but I realize I've spoken for quite some time now um, and it might be a good idea for um, for me to open up to questions and answers if anyone has got anything they'd like to ask okay so thank you so much for your time um, and I'm hoping that the presentation has been useful and that you now feel as infused about count on numeracy as I do if you've got any questions, please do just pop them in the chat box now on Zoom and I will answer as many as I possibly can.